Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the other day I did a video about awesome free game development tools. So you can see a list of them uh, down over here. You get an idea of the kind of things I fe featured in this. I mostly started with super common things, just a minute or two. Then I got into some slightly more obscure options out there. So these are some of the best free game development tools available to you. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you do so. But the thing is, it is just some of. It's not a comprehensive list, and it's not a best of list. So there are other tools out there. And one thing I noticed in the video comments, if you watch the free game dev tools video, you're going to see there were a lot of comments about one particular application enough so that I decided, you know what, I'm going to revisit this particular app. So what is that application that so many people mentioned it? is Blockbench. What is Blockbench? Blockbench is a low polygon 3D modeling editor. It actually does a lot more than just low poly work. Uh, it also can do uh, animations and texturing. Obviously, it comes from a uh, Minecraft-esque bent, but you could use this to create some really cool things, as we will see in just a second. So it is a low polygon modeling tool. It has texturing tools built in. It has animation tools built in. There is a full-blown plug-in system. It is also free and open source. So all of my favorite things are included there. It can be used for more than just Minecraft, but obviously that is where this grew out of. Uh, I actually covered this tool in the past. You can actually see I reviewed it back in November 2020. So we're coming up on five years now since I last looked at this application. So I figured, eh, it is time for a revisit. When so many people brought it up in my free tools roundup, I figured, okay, this one definitely deserves some more exposure. So if you're interested in seeing what it is actually capable of, what you're going to see here, this is a gallery of the splash screen winners in the past. I used one of these for the thumbnail generation that you saw here. So I just want to highlight what this is capable of. So you can get in terms of the graphics that were created with it. It can do a lot better. Let's just say a lot better than what I'm going to demonstrate in just a second. So you get an idea of the kind of art style that this is all about. You can actually get to like a semi-realistic style. Again, it's still blocky, but this is almost like a PS1 style that you could get there. And obviously you've got that uh, Minecraft-esque view. So this was used for the thumbnail for this particular video. So these, these splash screens will give you an idea of what it is capable of. Now, this person is not having a good day, nor is this chicken that spilled its ice cream. But this thing, is this totally reminds me of Richard Scarry's, which I grew up on reading. So absolutely love to see something like that. But it gives you an idea of what this is capable of in the hands of someone competent. And now you're about to see what it is capable of in the hands of someone incompetent. And if you're thinking, oh, that's not too bad. That bridge looks pretty good. Yeah, I downloaded this. This is not my creation. But what you're going to find is this is um, able to do 3D modeling. So you see you've got this modeling view over here. Uh, we've got editing view, paint view, and then we've got like a, a rendering option over there. So here you can see uh, edit. Uh, this is where you would model your tool. By the way, you do have uh, viewport options. So I could go ahead. I can split the screen in multiple different ways. Uh, so we can do a triple view or whatever. Or we can, of course, go back to a single display. So most of your modeling is done in this type of display. Now, this is a Java block. So it's very limited in what it can do. I'm going to showcase this from more of a creation aspect. So let's go ahead. We'll create our new project like so. And you got quick setup. So you got a number of different options. If you're using this for game development for your own assets, something like uh, Unreal Unity or so on, or doing 3D printing or something to that effect, you're going to want a generic model. There are other options here, mostly for things like Minecraft and modding of existing games. Here you can see generic model is used for Godot, Unity, Unreal Engine, Sketchfab, Blender, 3D printing as examples. And really, that's all you need to do. Go ahead, create, and then let's just name it my model. You can set up the texture resolution. We'll start with 16 by 16 blocky pixels. That's fine by me. Uh, you can decide how it's going to uh, do its UV unmapping. It does it automatically for you, which is very cool. So now what do you do? Well, you're in edit mode. Now you need to create a 3D model to work from. So you got a number of different options. Over here, you've got, uh, you can add a cube or you can add a mesh. You can also add a group. So if you're going to get animations, each one of these basically can be thought of as a bone in a chain. So then you can have something attached to it. So we've got our cuboid model we're going to attach to that particular bone. So when this bone moves, everything under it will move. So if you're using a hierarchy of bones for animation, a little bit beyond what I'm going to get into today, uh, but you can do so creating these groups. And that's all that's really required to do animations. On top of that, there are abilities to do things like IK chains and so on. There is a ton of animation tools. We're not going to get into them that detail. I will show you instead uh, the very basics of animations here. So you notice here with this model selected, I can then go ahead and we can do things 
like this. So we got straightforward manipulation tools. And then up here, I could pick various different uh, selection modes. So I could do like the whole object itself, or I can go into face select mode. And then here you can see I can select an individual face. And with that face selected, you're going to notice I have a number of options over here. So I can create new faces. Uh, I can inset the selection, which let's, let's do that. So we're going to go ahead here. We're going to do first do uh, an extrusion, a very common thing to do. So let's extrude that out like so. Uh, and then what I could do also is an inset. So then we'll grab that and we will, which there we go. And then I could go ahead and let's get, go back here to move and we can move that inside. So you could have like an interior container like this. So that gives you an idea of the basics of modeling here. At the same time, you can do things like loop cut. I believe I do a loop cut by selecting all of the objects like so. So there is my loop and then I'll go ahead and do a loop cut and I can pick the direction. So it's a very unintuitive way of doing loop cuts. Let's go back here, cuts, one, percentage, and then cut. So you've got the ability to do loop cuts, which will um, theoretically make a slice this way, but it sliced it a different direction. So I don't find the, the cutting tools as intuitive as for other applications out there, but you do have options. You also got here, I could do mirror modeling. So if I do things on one side, I can also do them on the other. Um, it's a it's a powerful enough tool. Again, you've got your straightforward things here, like uh, again, scaling, uh, out shifting things. You've also got the ability to set up pivot snapping. So if I created another object here, so let's go ahead and create another cuboid like so. Uh, and then let's move it over. So we've got multiple objects in our scene like so. I could do vertex snapping of it. So I select a, a vertices over here, select a vertices over there, and it will automatically snap those two shapes together. So what you're often doing is basically creating these compound objects out of um, multiple different cubes. There's no technical booleans in here. And I don't think there's the ability to subtract, which is a little bit of something that I find myself missing. But you use all this together basically to create um, 3D objects. It's a very simple, straightforward modeling tool. And once you've got that done and you like what you've done, you can get into painting. So you notice over here, we've got this UV map that's being generated. I can actually go ahead. So I've got both of my cubes selected like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a texture on this. I'll just call it texture. And then it automatically selects all the various different faces and it's doing all the UV wrapping for me. So if I want now, I can go over to painting. So painting is straightforward on a per face basis. So let's say I wanted to take and make something red. I wanna do it in this or in a section over here. So I'm gonna go here to the flood fill and we're gonna pick the uh, yellow face over here. Oh, that's everything. Okay, I need to go into select fill mode element here and then you can go ahead so there so we picked each one of our individual things like so or we could go here to face and then we pick an individual face and paint them accordingly and you see over here your uv map is being updated by the way you can zoom this out or back in as you wish you can create multiple textures for your scenes you do not have to deal with things like unwrapping or anything like that you just work with them all here together and then you can also fill uh, with connected colors so if you've got like all of this yellow over here let's go ahead and make this like green, you will find all the continuous yellow. And then you see we've got this border, which is a slightly different color. And we can do the same thing, connected color, and it's going to fill all of those in as well. So your painting tools are super simple. It's kind of like pixel art-esque in the way that you work with things. It makes it really straightforward to actually do your texturing. Again, you have this hierarchy of objects over here you can work with. You do have quick snaps where you can move between various different things. Um, and then you've got uh, your coloring mode over here. And then finally, we have the animation side of things. And animation, there is so much more to this than I'm showcasing. But basically, I'm going to select my object over here. Uh, and then down here, you can basically, you've got a timeline of animations. So, oops, right here. So I know, okay, so I create a nuke animation and I'll call this my anim. So anim, my anim, this is gonna run exactly just once. So here we are now in it. And you can notice our object that is selected has a variety of different animatable keys. So like uh, rotation, position, and so on. So I could do a new line here, position for that first key, let's put it over there. And then we'll jump forward to the one second mark. Let's go over here. I think it auto keys. Let's go to the one second mark and then we'll go to over here. And then we will go to the one five mark and then we will set one more key 
like so. So there is a very simple animation that just goes from here to here. I'm trying to remember how to, to limit my range of time. It uh, doesn't matter. You can actually set it to be only X amount of time animation as well. But now that we've got that created, boom, that is all that is involved in animating. So you can see you've got out of the box, you've got things like position, rotations, and scales, but you can do so much more than this. You can actually create uh, a, a null node on one end and then uh, I think it's a receptor on the other end and create IK chains so that when one thing moves, everything down the chain moves with it. There's a bunch more animation tools than what you've seen here so far, uh, but it does give you an idea of what it is capable of. By the way, you can also do uh, curves and have the curve editing over time. So you smooth moves of the curves over the timeline and you can see that curve right here actually. So you can actually go ahead work with that one instead if you wish to do so so that is like the very very basics of so there you see that over time how that curve worked um very very basics of how animations actually work again you're capable of doing so much more than i showcased there but i'm just going to show you the very basics of the tools and on top of that there's a number of other features here as well um, so you're going to find toolbox, a number of different tools that are available here. Sometimes they are hidden. You've got things for doing seaming of your UV mapping and so on. And then one thing I mentioned earlier on is plugins. And what you're going to notice here, there's actually a ton of plugins available for this guy uh, that you can extend and add and then bring in gives you uh, new capabilities. You can bring in like voxel importers, exports, and so on. So this is a fully extensible modeling solution as well. And so far, everything that you've seen, everything that I have done here has been in the, um, the web application. But if you want, there is a downloadable version of this for major platforms that are out there. So again, a very simple demonstration of what Blockbench is all about. But if we head back to their website, which, by the way, is available at blockbench.net, once again, go to the gallery, and it does give you an idea of exactly what this application is capable of. So it is capable of so much more than what I demonstrated. But it does give you an idea. And sometimes working with this low-poly style uh, forces you to be more considered in what you create. And as a result, you can create some really cool works uh, like this Richard Scarry's inspired splash screen right there. So let me know what you think of Blockbench. Obviously, if you are not working in a low poly style, uh, this isn't going to be for you. Now, you can see there is definitely a diversity of styles that you can create using this application, uh, but it is very obviously blocky, thus the name Blockbench. But again, completely free, completely open source, completely cross-platform. So I do understand why so many many people mentioned this one to me in the free game dev tools video. So if you're curious, do be sure to check out that free game dev tools list. By the way, if you have other recommendations for me, uh, I cover pretty much everything game development related on this channel. So do let me know. And if you like this kind of content, do of course hit like and subscribe. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.